California is the epicenter of the wildfire epidemic. Over the past few years, wildfires have gotten more destructive, more deadly, and more expensive to put out. Many link this to climate change, but that's not the whole story. Fire doesn't have to be scary. Fire on our term is good. Fire not on our term could be bad and devastating. Some believe that fighting fires has made things worse. The Europeans are gonna fight fire. It's like, why don't you fight rain or fight earthquakes? You know, it's just kind of this ridiculous idea. The Karuk tribe in Northern California thinks the only solution is to embrace fire. Before European colonization, indigenous tribes practiced traditional burning for generations as a way to actually protect their forests from catastrophic wildfires. Humans have been using fire as a management tool for millennia. Prescribed fire is the most effective tool we have to prevent wildfires. For over 100 years, federal and state policy has pushed to put out every fire at all costs. Now, the Karuk tribe is leading the movement to change that. They believe that both their land and their culture depend on it. Our birthright was taken from us as fire people and fix the world people. And we're trying to restore that for the kids. We're playing catch up. We need to renew our relationship with fire. The clock is ticking. So this is, uh, this is home. This is where my family's been since the beginning. And over the years, I just kind of watched it get thicker and thicker because of the laws there were. We weren't allowed to treat it traditionally like our ancestors used to do. By prescribed fire, we were able to keep the invasive species out and keep the heavy fuel loading down to a minimum. So that way our resources like the elk, the bears, and the deer, they can still pass through the brush and the woods. We got away from some of that traditional knowledge. Now we're bringing it back. Herman Albers, is the Wildland Fire Operations Specialist for the Karuk Fire and Fuels Program. Stiver, Albers, Orleans Repeat. We are at the Soames workstation, uh, getting things together. We'll see the crew when they get here. His crew helps thin the forest by clearing the buildup of highly flammable brush and dead vegetation. They strategically gather it into piles away from larger trees. Then, they burn them. But these prescribed burns are an act of resistance. A 1911 federal policy made it illegal for people to start fires on public land. Another law said that all fires must be put out by 10 a.m. the following day. Fires temporarily decreased, but in turn, the force thickened. The reality is things right now are so out of balance simply because we've taken fire out of the landscape. These forests are just tinderbox waiting to go. And we have to have fire on the landscape to keep catastrophic fire from destroying the landscape. We don't get our forest to accept fire and we'll just keep losing these huge swaths of forest. The tribe's ancestral territory spans over one million acres along the Klamath River in Humboldt and Siskiyou counties. But just like all other indigenous tribes in California, the Karuk don't have full jurisdiction over their land. So in order to legally implement prescribed burns, they must work in collaboration with the U.S. Forest Service. We have 1.2 million acres that we want to treat and restore, and we can't do it alone. If we're trying to do it ourselves, it's going to take way too much time. We're never going to get ahead of the curve. We're way behind right now. Last year, the Forest Service signed a new implementation plan to support traditional Karuk burning practices. The plan was born out of the Western Klamath Restoration Partnership, a historic collaboration between the Karuk tribe, the Forest Service, and other community stakeholders. They all agree on one thing. Wildfires have gotten out of hand. Wildfires have heavily impacted this landscape in ways that make me want to vomit and cry. Incredible sacred landscapes that have been gutted by high severity wildfire. We're sort of the doctors treating the landscape, giving it their prescription to where they can be healthy again and grow and thrive. It scares me that it might not happen fast enough that I won't be able to witness it. The government now admits that a century of misinformed fire suppression policy contributed to the wildfire epidemic in the state. 
And today, anti-fire policies and general public sentiment linger nationwide. You know, with the passage of the Weeks Act in 1911, there was a zero tolerance policy for any kind of prescribed fire. And, and the reality is, is that everybody who lived here at that time used fire in one way or another. You know, the cattlemen, the ranchers, the gold miners, the tribal communities all used fire as a tool. But here's the thing. Forest fires were a financial threat to the timber industry. The U.S. Forest Service was created in large part to secure a continuous timber supply for the American people. But for more than half a century, they implemented an aggressive fire suppression agenda. Fire! Fire that roars up the valleys to the peaks with burning, exploding, sweeping everything in its path, leaving nothing but gray ashes and charred stumps and dead animals, destroying millions of board feet of timber that we need to win the war. Another American tragedy, another careless, happy-go-lucky, patriotic American like you has made Hitler happy. The Forest Service's advertising icon, Smokey Bear, became a household name, one with lasting effect on the American psyche. Thanks to those who helped make America great. The next time you come to the forest, do me a favor. Please. Only you. you. Only you can forest prevent fires. forest fires. Only you can prevent forest fires was a constant reminder to Americans that all forest fires were bad, the enemy. Just to be a kaduk, you're already illegal. If we just be ourselves, we're breaking all types of laws our hunting practices, our fishing practices, our burning practices. Maybe they could have continued with ceremonial fire, but maybe I wouldn't be here today because they would have been rubbed out or they'd be doing 40 years in prison for arson. It's the right of people to use fire as a tool and people have resisted fire suppression at the risk of being thrown in prison. You know, this place in California is the hotbed of resistance against fire suppression policy. As the Kaduk try to push for more prescribed burns, California wildfires continue to get worse. In 2018, over 1.6 million acres burned across the state. That includes Camp Fire, the deadliest and most destructive fire in California history that killed 86 people and destroyed over 18,000 structures. While there is progress being made to implement prescribed burns, some say it's just not happening fast enough. I'm not gonna see the results of my work, and that's okay, because uh, we don't do it for ourselves, you know, we do it out of this responsibility. I'm doing it because that's my job as a Kaduk person. The thing I'm most afraid of is coming up short, not actually able to do the amount of work that needs to be done. In 2018, the Western Klamath Restoration Partnership began a project to implement a 5,570-acre prescribed burn in Kaduk territory. Across the entire United States, 11.3 million acres were treated with prescribed fire in 2017. But prescribed fires are still difficult to implement, especially in the West. This is due to weather limitations, air quality and smoke regulations, and the fear of liability lawsuits. California has the strictest air quality regulations in the country, and private properties are speckled throughout the state's mountains. Those homes are often protected at all costs. But at the same time, the Kaduk are worried about protecting their way of life. For me, I came to it through, you know, how do we protect a community from wildfires? Well, we use fire to fight fire. But for the tribal community, it's, you know, how do we get the cultural materials to keep the culture alive? Whether that's regalia or food or medicine, you know, that all depend on fire. My fear is, how do I continue being myself if I don't have these things? You know, whether it's salmon or a forest, how do I live? Maybe I'm still alive, but would you want to be if your landscape is completely gone? With regular burn intervals, it'll burn up into here. Eventually, you know, another 50 years, this will be a huge tree and this will be a huge hole and you could have a, you know, quite a bit larger animal living in there. A little bit of fire isn't gonna affect this nice hard part, but it'll make a nice home inside. You know, fire can create all this wonderful habitat that uh, we've been sorely lacking where this tree's begging for it. Prescribed fires are already proving beneficial to traditional plants. 
This is a wonderful little basket material. And you see you got your shade, all your trees didn't get totally new. It'll just be wonderful. I can see the pliability there and it hasn't even cut me or anything. Some of the needles still here. It's not all ash and dust. So what that does is allow for the nutrients that are within these to go back into the soil and help promote this good growth of these shoots. Whereas if it was high intensity, all you would see is just pits of white ash everywhere. And it's just decimated. It can't come back to its natural state without a lot of love and care and help from the people. For the Karuk, fire is a matter of survival. They worry that prescribed burns aren't happening at the scale that they need to be. Nearly 50% of Karuk territory hasn't been touched by fire in the last 100 years. And because of that, it was left completely vulnerable. We're doing good work here. Being a Karuk tribal member it has way more meaning to me to do this because this is what my ancestors did and it's what was taken from them in the past. And we're gonna make a movement and you're gonna hear about it all over the world. And it started right here.